Hey, welcome to Rhino. Today, you're gonna get your first lesson in mixed martial arts. My name is Rob Rhino Guarino. Welcome to the Rhino Fight Team. I opened the school about two years ago, about 27 pro and amateur fighters out of this one location. This is uh, where we do all of our business. Seven titles came out of this school alone. Um, that's why I kind of created this DVD for you, to show you what we have as a team. I've watched a thousand DVDs, I'm tired of seeing the same wall with the same two people trying to do different things. Maybe it's just my ADD, but I can't focus on just the same thing and over, over and over again. So I want to showcase to you my fighters, what I offered the world of MMA. I'm going to show you our drills, I'm going to show you the tools that we use, and the way we like to do it. Enjoy the DVD. First thing we're going to do is a basic stance. So I tell people all the time, take three steps, like, just like you're walking, left, right, left if you're a right-handed fighter, and you square up. Now when you square, it's the same stance. I didn't adjust my feet at all. I just took a normal step and almost just bent my legs, not a full squat, nice bend in the knees. My heels are not down, I'm actually on the balls of my feet. You don't have to be like you're wearing high heels. Just on the balls of your feet, nice, relax. Your hand should be on your cheekbones, right here. I tell people, at least my right hand, I'm like, hey, oh, right there. Okay, so I keep right here. My lead hand is the same thing, elbows in tight. And no means do I keep my elbows out, that leaves me open for the kicks to the body or swim in. So right here is my basic stance. From here, I can sprawl, I can kick either leg, and I can punch with my hips pivoting. If your feet are too close and you try to pivot, you're going to see your legs are going to cross. If you're not wearing a cup, it's really uncomfortable. So once again, they should be right here. So when I pivot all the way, my thighs are not touching. So basic stance. Uh oh, uh oh, you don't know. You don't know. Now we have our basic stance. We're going to start defending punches. We're going to parry the shots, actually. So, Jeff, please come in. Now, there's a few different ways we can parry the shot. The main way is to take your back hand. There's a reason why I use my back hand. I'm going to explain it in a second. Again, like that AO stance right here. AO. This is very important. With this right hand here, I can catch hooks, parry shots, and turn my hand over for crosses. Okay, I'll explain it all right now. The reason why I don't use my lead hand is that if he was to throw a jab, I can over shoot and his cross can come right over. So I wait until his shoulder is extended. Another good reason, bend your shoulder and flex your shoulder nice and hard. It's harder for you to put his hand down here, extend your arm, and just me that. It changes the direction of his punch. So if I try and reach and parry, it's not going to work the same. He's going to just come right over and could. So I wait until that shot right before it bang, hits. I make sure it's real. So when I do it, it's real. Oh. Again, it's not real, it's not gonna work. So he's tapping me on my head to make sure when I do parry, it's a real parry. He's not, what are you jabbing there? It's not this. So when I do it, do the jab again? It's fake. It's got to be real. Got to make sure he can hit. Just take it, like cuff it, palm it, and just redirect it. Switch angles. Also, I take my lead hand and I comb my hair a little bit. If he was to throw a two-piece, I block both. And if he doesn't bring his left hand back in time, a lot of fighters do like a chug-a-chug-a -chug motion 
when they hit, and he actually just did it, and I realized it. So if he throws his two piece, and it's too slow, he gets clipped. That's why you always keep hands in tight when you throw your shots. Shoulder to ear, hand up, switch, shoulder to ear, hand up. Parries are really, really important. Now we're gonna go over what if he throws his cross. Like I said before, parries are important, but so is your head movement. You don't want to stand here and just flap your hands around. You need to get your head movement going. So head movement here. As he throws his cross, I'm gonna deflect it out. The reason why I deflect it, if you see, I'm still gonna block my face like that cobra. Keep it there. It leaves body shots open. At least shots open. My favorite. Leg kicks, wide open. Okay? There's a lot of good things we can do off that cross. But, sorry, cross, I don't want you to reach. Because once again, by reaching off, that hand is going to come right over top. Then you can come beep, straight around the button because I have nothing here to defend. Cross. Now we're going to do a parry to a shot combo. He throws his jab, I'm going to parry down. I take my hand from here, again I cup it, and I'm going to roll my knuckles right over. So I'm going to take the touch and roll it right over. From there, my hand's going to hit his face for his hand to come back. Pop. He throws his hand. Why does this work? I take it and I redirect his punch. I throw it down. As I throw it down, I make my fist. Go again. I'm going to drop my hands so you can see what my hands are doing. See the fist landing? I'm going to do it for real now. Put the other hand up. Off that same combo, we can do an up jam. You can throw a kick. T. A lot of things you can do off the parry. The parry keeps your face safe. It's hard for him to hit you in the face. You know how frustrating it is when you're trying to hit somebody and you can't? That's what I want to say. Got your parries. Oh, oh, over now is things you need when you're training. First things first is always the boxing glove. The boxing glove has its pros and cons. Pros is that you could hit things hard with it and not mess your hands up. But it teaches bad habits. For instance, Joey. Chanda. Now with the boxing glove, you can drop your hands a little more and it'll still protect your face. But his knuckle stops about here and it's all that padding. This is bad because it trains the fighter to keep his hands down. So instead of his hands being where they should be here, it's training him to keep his hands here. So yeah, it's good for the knuckles not to hurt yourself, but it's bad training because it's training him to do something incorrect. So what I need, even with the boxing glove, keep your hands as if you have a no rules glove on. Thank you. Second thing we can use is the amateur glove or the safe MMA glove. Um, it's a plain glove with about what is it, uh, seven ounces of padding. So it hits like a box glove, but it's open palm. So, Alexis, you get the same feeling open hand, you can grapple, you can grab. Same feeling, but you do have to keep your hands up a little higher. You can't hit as hard with them, 
but they're a lot more realistic size-wise. They're not out here or this high. So it's a lot more realistic for your glove. Thank you. Or, of course, we need most of all is our no-rules glove. Four-ounce glove, just like you're fighting. Every time you grapple, you should have a four-ounce no-rules glove on. Why? It's realistic. It's the way it should be. When you pull out of something, it's real. If you train with an amateur glove, which was the one I just showed, sometimes stuff gets caught when you're trying to pull out. The no-rules glove is the number one necessity you need more than anything else. Now I want to go on to the trainer. The trainer needs focus pads. Good focus pads worth its weight in gold. Jump and up. A few different things we could do with the focus pads. You keep your elbows nice and tight and tight to your face, two piece. All right, nice and tight so it's realistic to face punching. I always go cross, um, jab, so it crosses, cross. The reason why I do this, it makes the fighter turn his hips, two piece, instead of being, throw your jab here, cross, good. The fighter doesn't turn as much. So I always make him cross, two piece, good, two piece, good. Something else with the mitts you could do, you can get the fighter nice and tired by keeping up nice and high, two piece, good, two piece, it works the shoulder. We can go face and then long, so he really has to turn his hips hard, two piece. See how he's got to turn his hips a lot more, two piece. Two piece. It's really exaggerating his hips. At the same time, we can bring two piece, two piece, two piece, two piece, all around that. Thank you, Sean. The tie pads are good for the kicking, knees, but holding tie pads is a big deal. A lot of people do it wrong, kick the elbow. What you need to do when you hold tie pads is keep them together, elbows tight to your body. Square up in your fight stance, again, together, tight to your body. If I want to have, Sean, that again, please. You to throw a switch kick. Because he's going to throw a switch kick, I want to keep this pad above this pad, so I don't want his toes getting caught here. If I keep it flat, he's going to have to flatten his foot out. He's going to have to flatten his foot out. I don't want him kicking with a flat foot. I actually want those toes bent. So I bend this here. So all the shin should be there, and the toes won't catch this pad. Right. Also, my elbows, again, are really tight to my body. So if I square up with them and I tell them to switch kick, it's here. Yep. Now the back kick's the same thing. I switch the pad that's closest to the shin, goes a little beyond the other pad. Back kick. Hip, hands, hip, right there. That's the tie pads. Thank you. My favorite pad, the round pad. You can do everything and anything with this pad. This replaces all other pads, um, hands down. Let's just... The way you hold is a big deal. Because how thick it is and the grips it has, you can rest it right on your shoulder, nice and high, two piece. And I can have him go as hard as you can, two piece. Harder. One, just keep it across, hard. Harder. Hands up, hard. It doesn't really affect me. If I need to throw, let's say, a three piece, we'll throw that left hook, jab, cross, hook. This motion, you can do anything with it. Right up, cut. Left up cut, right up, left hook, right hook, good, knee, knee, kick, kick, cross, right kick, cross, right kick, hook. You just fling it around. This takes places of all other pads. Very, very, very important. It's underrated. I don't see a lot of trainers use them. I don't know why, because I take this with me everywhere I go. I don't even take focus pads with me anymore. This is all I take. It's all I need. Reason being, he can hit it again super, super hard, and it doesn't, doesn't hurt his hands, how soft it is, and it won't hurt me either. That's the tools you need to train.
boxing and, and mixed martial arts is, if you look at a person's eyes, I mean, that's not really where any of the techniques are going to come from. So if, if you're so inadvertently looking at a person's eyes, if you look at the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys, you look at Hoist Gracie, well, why are they so, why are they so quick to the takedown? Because they draw the, their opponent's attention. They keep their head up high, so it forces you to say, well, I'm going to take this guy's head off. And then by the time you throw the punch, they're gone. And the next thing you know, you're wrapped up and you're taken down. What I'm going to go over now is the three of the punching bags I had in my school and the reason why they're set up the way they're set up. First things first is the Muay Thai bag. I like the Muay Thai bag uh, to drag on the ground, hardly moving. Reason being is I can hit it really hard. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to waste time. So as I work it, it's not going to really move. My goal is to be to get this thing to the wall, hard. It's not going to really move. It goes right back to a stationary position. So it's always right there. The normal punching bag, as you see, I like to hit it, but to me it wastes a lot of time. I let it swing it around. What I like to do with the normal punching bag is use it for a foot work. So I'm going to hit it, and as it follows, I'm going to go with it. I don't ever want it to touch me. So I can leave the whole thing with footwork. And this is a teardrop bag. I like these bags for throwing elbows and really hard punches with the no rose gloves on because you know you're not going to hurt your hands. It's really soft on top, but then gets really hard on the bottom. So it's good for conditioning your knees and your shins. Plus you can hit it really hard, you can rip elbows into it, and it's nice and soft on top. So as I throw, I can hit hard, grab the body, and when I kick it, just off conditioning, my shins. Grab the top like you're holding your head and the uh, tie clinch. And you rip those knees. And that's a teardrop bag. Hey! Now, right now, I'm going to. Uh, Kind of a warm drill, but it's also really important for mixed martial arts. Uh, the over under, or I'm going to swim, as other people call it. Um, really important for a scramble situation. So we're going to go over under position or swimming position. And right here. What's really important is that I don't just hug them and lay. A lot of wrestlers will just take this and kind of jack it down and just lay here with the legs out. But then he's got this back knee, pop your knee. Throw the knee, throw the knee. She's got the knee here. Even if I take this and cross, there's still times you can sneak it in. With the over-under, you want to keep your hands nice and straight, almost like you're going to drive a car, right here. So from here, I'm going to take this hand, like I'm swimming, I'm going to dip it in. Ready? Dip it in, and I'm going to go to the other side. Turning my head also, just like I'm in the water, Head in, swim, head in. I keep a hard shoulder up, changing his direction. Here. If I just lay on him, we're both going to be in this position. I want to kind of throw him off balance the whole time. Um, I do that by driving my car. Throw him off balance. I don't want him to get his balance to do pop back up, rip some knees. Nice. I don't want him to get his balance to start getting me in trips, <laughs> or even just basic throws. So we're going to swim, and it's just like that, hand in, hand in, hand in, to swim, right? Swim. The whole time I do it, the hand that's under jacks it up. Swim. 
Jack it up. touch right now is the tie clinch and a few tie knees. Um, I very rarely see correct knees. A lot of people throw their knees, but I see lots of thigh throwing. So I'm going to touch over the correct Muay Thai clinch for MMA with good MMA knees. Right? Now what you see, a lot of people they'll grab the back of the head, turn, they'll grab the back of the head. This is not a good clinch. Reason being is Frankie, look up and pull back. He can pull out of this. What you need to do is grab the crown of his head, elbow, and tight. From here, if you want to grab the back of the neck, you slide it up to the crown of his head. Now Frankie look up, and he can. I have full control of his head. The body goes, where his head goes. I have full control of his entire body at this point. Even if Frankie tries to start re-clinching up, Smart thing for him to do is block my hips. If not, I have knees all day into whatever I want. Cheap thing I always do is once I put his head below my chin, I rest my chin on the crown of his head. At this point, I can slag off my hands, and my neck pulling down is stronger than his neck pulling up. Look up. I also now get a little step back. I also know when I throw my head knee, where his face is. If I'm resting my chin here, I know his face is right there. So when I throw the knee to the face, I go straight up to my chin. Straight up. So from here, I know his hands are wide because they're on my head. I can feel where his hands are. Once I touch the crown of his head, I know my knee can go right there. Right there. That's a knee to the face from a clinch. I'm going to also throw a knee to the body from a clinch. Elbows in tight. Grab the crown of his head. I'm going to take my back leg and I'm going to slide it across it. As I do that, I take my opposite elbow, I throw it into his collarbone, and I slide him where I want it. Pull about there. When I get there, my back knee is ready in position to throw it to the body. Take my back leg, slide it, throw. Grip the knee to the body. You always point your toes when you throw your knee to tighten the ligaments in your knee and makes it a lot safer for your kneecap. So without him, I hold him here. I take my back leg, I slide it, and throw my elbow. Once this foot lands, I rip that knee. Here's the crown of his head. I can let him. Pressure off his head, put my chin on, take his foot, throw, and rip the knee. I do it so he's kind of throwing himself into my knee. My knee lands before he quick catch a bounce. So I throw him, he's still like off balance. And that's how I rip the knee. So he's gonna kind of be look up. He's gonna be off balance. And that's when I rip the knee. If I feel like I'm far from him, I'll just pull him back in. And at any time, I know that's where his face is. That's where his face is. Because he's dirty. Dirty saves. Like this. Nice! Save you go. Probably the most basic and most important is how to throw your hands. How to throw jab crosses, hooks, uppercuts, whatever you want to let these bombs do, you got to learn how to do it. You don't think you're born just swinging. Boxing is a big part of mixed martial arts. Whether you want to take it for what it is or just a touching feeling aspect. Some punches are made to touch, some are made to destroy. It's up to you which your hands does what. So we're going to get into our stance. 
hands up. Okay. First thing you have to really learn is that punching comes from the ground and not your hands. That's not a punch. It's not a punch. It's got to come from your hip and the ground. Pops out. Pops out. Pops out. There. When I first started to uh, learn how to box, I shadow box in front of a mirror all the time, and I tried to punch myself in the nose. The reason being is I wouldn't punch here, punch there. I'd always try to look, punch the nose, punch your nose. Now, you take a little step forward and twerk your hip. Twerk your hip. Elbow in tight. Don't expose your elbows. I see your punch coming. A lot of guys will just do this or this. Punch comes from your face and back to your face. And back to your face. And back to your face. It's very important. Even if you have to punch yourself, bring it back. But if you don't punch yourself, I'm going to punch you. And stay up. Cross. Again, comes from the ground, from the pivot. There. Shoulder to ear, hands up. This hand never drops. That's a very common thing. Boy, this. Face is wide open. Shoulder to ear, hands on your face. Throw your two piece. We can add a hook into that. Now a hook, I like throwing off my cross. Why? Because I load my hips up. From here, I don't drop my hand and throw up. I'm turning it from my face, then to my cross first. As this pulls back, I bring it off my face. Let the hip do the rest of the motion. A lot of guys, they'll throw their hook and miss. Either your face open, or as you've seen before, these punches. Next to tight, I throw it off across. Up here, and I pivot. I don't want to extend, because that's what's going to throw me off balance. Get everything nice and tight. Shoulder blocks my ear. And that's where I throw it. I throw a tight hook, or I can throw a little bit of a looser hook. Looser hook, tight hook. Loose, tight. From that same position, I can throw a lead uppercut. Straight up. Turn my hips. I'm going to pop my hip, turn my hip, pop my hip. I tell people all the time, throw uppercuts, they're going to give someone the finger. Straight up at the camera. There you go. Turn, turn. It's in your hips, it's in your feet, not in your hands. George Sullivan, I'm a professional fighter at the Rhino Fight Team. Today I'm going to be teaching how to throw a tie kick and MMA combinations. Today we're going to be learning how to throw a proper tie kick. Today I'm going to be using Adolfo Sanchez, USKBA champion. The first thing you need to do is you're going to walk up to your opponent, get into your kicking range. If I can touch his chin, I'm not in his kicking range. I'm going to take a half a step back, now I'm in my kicking, uh, kicking range. The first step to throwing a proper tie kick, you're going to walk up to your opponent, jab out, touch his chin, take a half a step back. Now you're in your kicking range. First thing that I need to start to do is, as I square up with him, I always step on a 45. This way, on the ball of my foot, 45. I'm going to step on the balls of my foot right there, ball of my foot. Again, run this drill through your head. Every time you get into your kicking range, it's on a 45. As I step on a 45, it allows me to get out of his punching range. So I'm going to step on a 45 and come back. If I step straight in, I can either cross, throw, and I'll also throw my knee into the kick. So if I step on straight in, I can't throw the kick. It has to be on a 45. Second part of throwing a proper tie kick. I'm going to square up again. I'm going to step on the 45 and lift my leg up, my knee straight in the air, and open my hip. Again, 45, knee up, open my hip, and then back down. Third part of this tie kick, I'm going to step in, hip up, 
chin down and explode off. Again, square up, get back into my kicking range, step on a 45, knee up, shin down, explode back. Now I'm going to demonstrate on how to throw the tie kick in full motion. I'm going to take this pad, take the brand name and line it up with this brand name so it always feeds my mind on where to kick. I always have a target. So if this was all blank and he added it here, I would just be aiming for the whole target. I want to take these two, line it up, put it, place it where I'm going to kick. All right, I'm going to square up, make sure I'm at, this is not my kicking range, I'm going to step out into my kicking range. Now I'm going to throw this kick. And back. Explode off on the kick. And back. Always on the always on the target. And hands up. First thing I want to discuss is where to kick with a back leg kick. Now a lot of shorts have symbols right in the lead leg area, which is something I always aim for. The kick should always land low, almost with the knee. Right here, it's a collection of nerves right by the knee, and this is what hurts. Not where the muscle is. The muscle, it's armor, it's protection. You don't want to hit the armor, you want to hit just below and the weak points. Now when you do throw the Muay Thai kick, you do not want to kick with your foot. There's a lot of small bones in your foot. You don't want to kick with the ankle. It also hurts. You want to kick with this part of your shin. All shin, all the time. No foot, no ankle. Shin, sharp, where there's no armor. That's how you put them down. Now I'm going to show a two-piece combo with a tie kick. I square up, it's going to be jab, cross, kick, and back. Again, as I throw the jab, I step on the 45, setting the kick up. The cross is not hard. It's just to set the kick up, bring his hands up. Again, jab, cross, kick, and back. Again, jab, cross, back. As I throw the jab, hands up on my chin. It's step, I'm stepping on my 45 on the ball of my foot. As I throw the cross, I'm opening up my hips just to throw the kick. Kick lands and I explode back. It's just to set the kick up. I want to bring his hands up. I want to protect myself at all times. By stepping on a 45, his cross will go right over my head. As I throw the kick in the combination, he's going to throw a cross at me because it's his defense. By stepping on a 45, it brings my head and my chin out of the way. Back. Again, and back. Right? Now I'm going to show you the defensive part of throwing this combination. Jab, cross, kick. He can hit me in the chin, he can hit me in the body. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to block the chin. As I throw the kick, I bring this hand across my face, blocking my chin, stopping his cross from hitting me in the chin. So, jab, cross, kick, and back. Now I'm going to throw the actual combination, he's going to throw a cross at my chin. One more time, and back. The second part is protecting the body. If I throw a standard tie kick and scoop, it leaves my ribs open. Demonstrate, and back. If he hits up, he's going to break my ribs. I have to drop my elbow in and block the whole portion of my body. And back. I'm Tom Galicchio. I'm a pro fighter out of the Rhino Fight Team. And today I'm going to demonstrate wrestling techniques for MMA and also wrestling defense for MMA. My partner, this is my partner Frank Lois. He is an amateur fighter and he is undefeated right now. Let's hope things stay that way. Let's, try, let's go right into the move. First, we're gonna get in good MMA stances. I'm gonna throw my jab, and as I jab, my level gets lower, see? Then as I throw my cross, I bring my left to my face, always blocking your chin, because that's the knockout spot. Then, I bring, as I'm bringing my right back, 
I lower my level, drop to the knee, slide my right leg up. It doesn't stay down like that, it stays up so we can generate power. I'm gonna lift his legs and sweep to the side like this. I can sweep him because of this hand right here. So now, as George made mention earlier, step when you throw your jab. But what he did was, he, when he threw his jab, he stepped on that 45 degree angle, which is very good. But we're trying to take the person down. That 45 degree angle isn't gonna be useful for what we're doing right now. So I throw my jab, I step, and I, my level is lower just from the jab. I bring my left hand back, and I throw that cross. Fire them hips. That's where it's all in. That's your power, your hips. And your takedown and whatever you choose to do. Fire that hip with that right. Bring, it, bring your hand back, and as you're bringing your hand back, you lower your level. So we're here, levels lowered. Bring this, bring your right leg up to the side. Hands are on his thighs. We're gonna stand up and sweep him all in one motion. As I stand up, I come to the side. I take a few steps. I, I claim side mount. All right, so we're in our fight stance, our hands are up. I throw my jab, and I step when I throw my jab, just as George explained earlier. So we step, then as I'm bringing my left back, I rock at my right with my hips. Now, when I bring my right back, I'm gonna drop to my lead knee as I bring the right back, and slide my right leg up. Again, just like that. This generates all the power. We're not on our knees. We're up. Now, right on the thighs. If we're up, I don't have as much control. If we're too low, he could sprawl, and then uh, it's really a dog fight. So, we're here. This is our total control. Now, I'm going to sweep him by standing and using this hand to push the leg, and this one is going to pull. So, I stand, I step to the side, and I drop. This hand, right here, blocks his leg from reclaiming guard. So now we take our side control and we can work on various submissions and, and strikes. All right, now I'm gonna show you another wrestling technique, but this is gonna work off of him. A lot of guys in MMA throw a lot of wild haymakers. So when I'm standing up and fighting with somebody and I wanna go for the takedown, I look right at the center of their chest right in between the chest muscles, the pecs, and right in, the, right in about the middle of his neck and his chest. So, he's gonna throw a wild haymaker. I see it coming, lower my level. And most of the time, I could even just grab it if he's coming in with as much force as he is. And then I lift up, and I slam him down so he can earn those impact points in the fight, and even jar his head a little bit. So again, we're here looking at the center of our chest. Our right, hands are up, our chin is down. He throws that wild haymaker. I come up and go for that big slam. That's what it will look like in fast motion. Now again, we got our eyes on the center of his chest. He comes at me, lower my level. I can even shoot. They will fall into the shot. So most of the time you can't get that slam. It's just putting your elbow down and pinning, and then working past the half guard or full guard to side mount. All right, again, now we have our hands up, our chins down, we're looking at the center of our chest. He throws that haymaker, sweep down, and go. Since I'm in this position, just push this down and claim, claim half guard, because we still got all our strikes, and then we can even work past the next foot to get to our side. Now I want to go over what I want to do from that position. I won a lot of fights off the guillotine. It's one of my favorite moves. Actually, uh, my first, I think, three fights were won off the guillotine uh, and my last one. So what I'm going to go over now is what I would like to do from that position. It's always the what if, what if, what if. What if Tom shoots? What if I throw the guillotine on? 
Uh, Tom? So Tom's going to do something not a thousand percent correct. He's going to get the whole basic move, but not a thousand percent correct. Not a hundred percent, talking about a thousand percent. So Tom's going to throw his two pieces. As he comes in, bang, I wrap my guillotine. I seen it coming. All I had to do was pop my hip out, suck in my hand, and I have the guillotine in pretty tight. Now if Tom correctly should try and clear my leg, but if he doesn't, pick it up, and I suck down. This is done. And suck. Time, Tom. Now, I seen Tom shots coming. Why I don't close my eyes when I get hit. So as he throws his two piece, my eyes stay open. As he sucks in, I feel it. I actually have the guillotine here. It's pretty sunk already. This time, Tom's gonna finish it correctly. Even if the guillotine is sunk, he's gonna switch my legs. Scoop up, and if he wants to throw a little slam, he can. Even tight, it's down. Now, Tom just cleared this side of his passageway. Tom, can you just put your hand through for a second so you see it? See, he just cleared this side. I no longer have this tight. The guillotine is not, put your arm back. The guillotine is not effective. I do not have that side of his throat locked anymore. Tom actually has a submission from here. You can learn that on MMANationTV.com shortly. I'm going to learn the hard way, Ali. Oh, yeah. Okay, plug, Ali. Let's see what you got. Damn. Nice. My name is Brendan Barrett. I'm a professional fighter at the Toronto Fight Team. Today, I'm going to show you a couple different things from the top side mount position. And we're going to do through a couple different uh, series, some striking, and a few submissions. We got a special guest partner today, Bubbles, coming from behind the camera with MMANationTV.com. So first off, as we just saw with Tom, he landed, ended up with his takedown in a side mount position. I have my hips in close to him and my knees blocking his hip and up by his shoulder. Starting out here, a lot of guys, as you see now, are going to want to try and, you know, block me getting to the mount position. From here, you know, I got a couple options. You know, first off, I can start softening my opponent up with some elbows to the ribs. Can't elbow the head on the ground. Well, I can a back elbow here. Just gotta watch, you know, straight down elbows. I can knee his shoulder over here, not the head. Now, normally, an opponent on the bottom is gonna try and turn away from my body because they feel that's more, you know, away from my power. As you can see here, and usually when they realize I got him in tight here, they're gonna turn back into me. That's when I can lock in a head and arm choke. Now from here, he's gonna be well, have his knees up, and basically it's gotta be very quick. I will lock all my pressure in here, drop my forehead straight to the mat and jump over. As soon as I jump over, I want everything flat. My hips, toes, knees, everything flat on the mat. And then from here, I'll squeeze in and look towards my opponent. Now if he tries pulling half guard from the bottom and sliding towards me, I just scoop my toes completely flat, until the phone comes in and then we'll tap. Because once they start sliding, it just keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter. The more they slide towards me and the more I just scoot my toes back, I keep my knees and hips flat. There's no way they can get into the half guard from here. <clears throat> I'm gonna start back in the side mount position, show this again. See, he's already turning into me, which uh, a lot of people will do. And once they turn in, I wanna keep this secure, come under, scoop under his head, lock my hands here, and again, it's got to be a very quick, quick transition. I'm going to drop my forehead straight to the mat, jump all the way over and land completely flat. From here, head to head, turn my face towards my opponent, squeeze, and scoot, and then he taps. Right there, basically, my main key point is to keep my hips, knees, and toes completely flat. If I'm in this position and I come up a little bit, he can come under and claim half guard and then my position and my submission could be jeopardized. I'm in the mount position, they're struggling. Once they turn in, lock, flatten, scoop. That can happen that quick, right off the takedown. Another option from the side control. If I'm in here and they're holding pretty tight, 
you know, say I start loosening him up, I give him some elbows and he drops his arms, his arms break. I can come under into the scarf position. From here, I like to keep pretty close. I can punch, but I gotta keep my hips and my weight on him and control his arm. If I feel his arm hanging, I can push it down, step over with my other leg. As I see he's already lifting up, I push down with this leg and I lift up with my hip, and that's an arm bar. It's hard to see right now because it's very, very tight, quick move. If I'm pressuring in and I pop up, he's gonna tap. I'm watching his arm. So basically I'm here, holding his arm, got some strikes, my hips are close. I just push his arm down, step over. You always want his hand up. Right there, step over. And then basically it's done with my hips. This thigh comes down, I raise this one up. And then right there, yeah, <laughs> doesn't take much. Now another one from the same position, I'm holding, we're fighting, I'm hitting. See, as I'm hitting, they usually lift up to protect their face right here. Push his arm down, step it over under my calf. See, he's already lifted up, it's very tight, very painful. This is a Kimura with my leg. Basically, I'm lifting up because it would already be tapping him. But I want to stick that under my calf, put my calf down to the mat, and raise my back hip right there. Very tight, very painful. So again, if I'm in the scarf, I'm hitting, I'm hitting. He goes to block his face, his arm comes up, stuff it right down, and there it is. Side mount again. Now I'm going to train right back into the scarf position where I'll come right under his head and keep my weight on him right here. Now I want all my weight in the center of his chest, which it is. So if I'm right here on the side or if I came right back here, my chest is right still on him in the same spot and my weight's on him. It's harder for them to breathe, more uncomfortable, and I have more pressure. Now from here, I'm on the blade of my foot and the ball of my foot here. If his arms hang here, I can strike. But if his arm's hanging loose, I can step over and I have a, an arm bar with my legs. Now, smaller guys, smaller weight classes, they're gonna have a little more freedom with that. You're gonna have to go a little further because they're a little more flexible. And the size of my leg also takes away a couple inches that I have to move for that move, this submission. Now again, if I'm in scarf, I'm up, I'm striking and he comes up to block his face. Another submission is a Kimura from here. I can step right over slide it a little away from his body, and then hip in, right there. From the scarf, my weight's on him, I'm striking, his arms come down, and I step over, figure four his arm, lock my weight on him, secure, then start striking. And then the fight's gonna be over. Now what I'm going to do is show you a different series from a different top in the same position. If I come in and I have side mount again, and I'm going to either try and pass the mount, or if my opponent pulls me into half guard. So if I'm here and my opponent gets me into half guard, you know, it's not that bad. See basically if he's in half guard, same thing, you always want to distract your opponents. Soften them up, some strikes, some elbows. From here, I don't mind being in half guard. I've ended most of my fights from this position. I'll pinch up on his legs back here. So I'll squeeze him in here, I'll push away. I usually post right here where I can still control his hips, keep him down, and from here is where I start striking. And once you get a couple good shots, they start lightening up, they start going a little limp, and then you don't have to worry about securing too much but you still want to hold your opponent, make sure it doesn't get away from you. So again, if I'm in side control and I get sloppy or if my opponent's very good on the bottom, he gets half guard, I'm gonna hold him tight, soften him up, make him, you know, distract him, post up, push his head away, strike down. Once I'm here, I still got my hips and my weight on him. See, I'm still on him right now. He's tight, you know, he doesn't have much movement. I keep him pinned, keep his leg pinned. I'll come up real quick, 
and strike down, get my position again. Like I said, if you feel him start going limp, stay up, striking until they stop the fight. But if you feel him starting to get away from you, regain your position. And most importantly, don't lose your position. <laughs> The last thing I want to show from this position is if I get the mount position. So I have my side mount, and basically from here, like I said, control being tight. If he's trying to block me from getting guard with his leg up, if he's crossing his legs, basically I'm going to reach back, shove his knee to the ground slide over. Once I'm in the mount position, I want my hips on his belly button. Because if I'm up too high, he can bump, bump me off. So I want to see all my hips right down on his belly button. Feel comfortable, lock his legs. From here, I can elbow in on his, his traps, his shoulders. So if we end up standing back up, it's hard to hold his arms up. Both sides, can strike, always go to the body. You can posture up and strike down. Very effective from the mount. A lot of strikes. Or you can slide up high, cross his arms, and from here, doesn't look like much, but his arm across his arm, my hips in, there's a submission right there, and they'll verbally tap. Because usually, uh, don't have yeah, their arms will be tight. <laughs> so again, real quick, I want my hips on his belly button. They're here. Soften up his traps, do some strikes, hip in, strike down. If I get up high and they cover, cross his arms, he'll come in, defend. That's why I gotta keep your pressure on him. Cross his arm here and do the arm bar over his own arm. You see him almost elbow to elbow. Cross here, hips in, pull back on the arm. All it takes. And those are, uh, Bunch of different series submissions and strikes for that you transition off the side mount position. Now full guard, you know, this could be, you know, his advantage from the bottom as well. But basically first I want to keep him tight, posture up over him so his legs will start breaking. And once I start breaking his guard, you can use the can opener. And then you want your opponent to break the guard. Sometimes they tap. <laughs> Once you break the guard, I want to come up and stand my knee behind his knee, hold his ankle, hold his calf. From here, I can do a couple things. I can hip in, punch down. I can hip in, sweep, and punch down. Either way, it's pretty effective. So we'll just start back from the guard. I want to posture up. I can either use the can opener or I can just pressure all the way over. And then if they're not locking, pull the can opener in. He locks up, come down, hit him, hit him, get up. Because you got to control the legs because they can up kick. They don't feel good. My knee is in the back of his knee. I'm holding his calf and I'm holding his wrist. From here, I want to explode my hips in. Explode them in and come down. If I want to pass, Explode in, pass, then I come down. Very devastating, devastating strikes. Hi, my name is Alexis Aquino. I'm a professional fighter out of Rhino Fight Team, and I'm going to be showing clinch takedowns and clinch defense. First exercise for today, I'm going to be showing clinch takedowns. I'm going to introduce Mike Marco, amateur fighter. All right, we're going to start from the over-under position. One arm's over, one arm's under. Over, under. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cut off his angle, sneak around to the side right here, reach around right here, grab my own wrist, suck him down. Notice that this leg is trapping right here. The reason for that is I want to go right into mount. I don't want to go in the head, uh, side mount or uh, guard. I want to go right in the mount. So I'm going to block this leg here, take it right down, right there, right in the mount here. From here I can do what I want. I can start throwing my strikes, throw my elbows, 
Work for submissions. Ready for my over under position? Like I said, I'm gonna sneak around to the side. I can't do, I can't reach around and grab my wrist if I'm right here, straight up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sneak around to the side, cheat a little bit. Now I can grab my wrist because I'm on the angle. I'm gonna work this right up into his ribs. I'm jacking him up. I'm in a squat position, jacking him up right here, and I'm cutting out on that knee. All right, so we're gonna go just like a tree. Back, right down. Also what I'm doing, coming around to the side, this is acting just like a two by four. Imagine falling on the back of a two by four. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna keep it and let him fall right on that. Just like that. Come on, guys. One move to show you. Two little parts. First of all, key lock. Okay? This is a standard key lock taught in most jujitsu schools. Okay? You're supposed to bring the elbow up like you're going up a ramp here. Alright? You lock in without thumbs, wrist, your elbow should be by the ear, holding on to the wrist. You slide your hand under your opponent's arm, lock into your own wrist, and slide up this way, okay? I don't want you to do a key lock this way though, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to take this whole arm and I want you to swing it. Hurts already. Uh, it's difficult because it hurts so bad, you need a flexible guy almost. You have to swing the arm all the way down to here. I let off on this a little bit. Once it's down to here, watch how far I have to go to tap him. Okay? Huge difference between here and flapping his arm like a bird and just slamming his arm as far down here as you can. Look, I can't even, if I just held his arm tight right now, he tap. You'll feel people have different flexibility for this, all right? But for the most part, it really, knots up the shoulder when you take this arm and switch it to this position, okay? It's a very, very dangerous key lock, all right? The same technique can be applied to the Kimura or the Americana, okay? So many people try and get this lock from here, but the funny, simple thing about it is all you have to do is slide it up, that's it. So all you have to do, it knots up the shoulder. The same way we took the key lock and slid it down. It's the same way you'll take the Americana or Kimura, however you want to describe it, and slide it this way. Okay? It takes a tremendous knot on the shoulder and really tears it apart. This is what we call, to your opponent, a safe situation, right? He thinks he's safe. What if we can exploit this? What if we can turn this into a dangerous situation? He thinks it's safe. What if I can hurt him now? All right, let's see how we do that. First of all, I'd like to get him to turn to his side. What's keeping him on his back right now? Me. Me, I'm keeping him on his back. So if I take my weight off of him and push on this arm, look what happens. He turns to his side. He still thinks he is safe. Right? Now I take my right knee and I slam it into his back. I prop it up real nice so that keeps him on his side now. So now my elbows and my knee have him nailed on his side. But he still thinks he's safe. Safe! I now take this foot and I start sliding it back into his throat more and more and then same key lock that we tried to get happens. Hi, I'm Swangler. I'm a professional fighter for the Rhino Fight Team. Today I'm going to walk you through a Superman punch leading into a takedown and then I'm gonna go over taking an arm bar from the back if you can't get the rear naked choke. My assistant today is Mike Madrano. Say hi, Mike. <laughs> so we're starting off 
by squaring up with each other, normal fighting stance, you're moving, normally you would circle, but you can. So we're standing, bouncing around, moving. First you want to do is get his guard to drop so you can actually score the Superman punch. You do this by selling a high kick. So you start off, you throw a kick, make his guard go up. Maybe throw a second one, it misses. He thinks the third one's coming, sell the kick so he thinks it's coming. Just bring your knee up. You don't want to turn your hip over. You're bringing your knee up. From there, it's just an extension. You come out, hit. From there, shoot, taking a double leg, clearing his legs, lift him up, put his legs to the side, coming down into tight side control. Okay, starting again. You've sold the kick, whether it be high, low. He thinks the kick is coming. So off of that, you come, all your extensions, your momentum's going forward. You're not stopping. So you come in with the Superman punch, put him down and get side control tight. Not just laying there, let him flop around. You're in tight and you had good control. That's right. pretty fun. The Superman punch works really good when his back's to something, the corner of ropes or around the cage. So we can get those kicks man, in circle. And now that I see his back is pretty much a good uh, length from the cage or the wall, it's a good time for me to throw a Superman punch. The reason being is stay right here. If I throw a Superman punch and he backs up, I don't have much to kind of stop my punch. If I'm, if I'm talking circle, Okay. So if I go in a circle and he's to the wall, if he backs up, it's to the wall. And I can finish my move. One more time. I need him to go where I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna put him to the wall by circling out this way. So he moves, I move. Once I see he's right against the wall, that's when I'm gonna throw. Leg up, and finish up. The combo. The Superman. That's a good time. Third fight Mike's had in two weeks. And they Keep them hands up. Stay 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 Mike has a really good choke defense. I can't sink the choke no matter what I do. He's keeping his chin down, he's good. You're going to reach over, grab his wrist, pull his arm up, sinking in and figure fouring the arm. He's not too sure what's going on, he just thinks he's defending the choke well. You're going to let his head slip out. After his head slips out, position his leg up just a little bit higher, falling back, Snapping it over and biting down. You have to bite down or he's gonna come through. So you bite down from here, reposition grabbing his thumb, pinching your knees together, and extending your back for the armbar. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm starting again from the back mount. You roll him to the side, getting up. You have him here, he's defending the choke really well. Grab his arm at the wrist, sink your other arm through and figure four. Let his head escape so he thinks he's getting away, keeping this leg tight against his body. You shift your weight over and pinch your knees together very tight. Your legs bite down to keep the pressure on him, grabbing his hand and wrist at the thumb, pointing his thumb outward, and you extend your back, pushing your hip out for the tap. Hi, it's going? I'm Steve Vitti. I'm a fighter out of Rhino Fight Team, and I'm just going to go over the basic team kick, or what they call a push kick, in Thai boxing, okay? Uh, T kicks can be utilized for a whole lot, a bunch of different reasons as an attack, as a defense, as a setup, as you know, a whole bunch of other things. Okay, the basic T kick. Okay, 
Can you tell with the front or the back, all right? Big misconception is a lot of people throw the T-kick and land. Everything is coming from your hips, okay? Just like punches, T-kicks are coming from your hips. So, if I was going to extend my leg for the T-kick, this is how it would look. Extending my hips, because you're pushing with your hips. So, extending my leg, a T-kick would look like so. Primarily hitting with the balls of your feet, okay? Notice my hands are up. The defense, chin's tucked into my shoulders, okay? Now, someone taller than me was to attack his jab. Of course, his reach is a lot longer than my reach, okay? So me as a tie fighter, I'm not gonna sit here and box with a guy whose reach, of course, is longer than mine, all right? It's pointless. What I'm gonna do is utilize my kicking range, okay? And in order to keep someone who's aggressive and tall out of your kicking range, I like to use the teeth kick. Because what it does is puts him in my kicking range. So it puts him where I want him to be. It's my game, okay? So if he was to throw his jab, okay? I can kick teeth kick to keep him away. See that? So he comes over his jab, I can eat it, or tease it. Alright? Now to go off of that. I can come right back, all right? For every offense, there's a defense, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna let him stay in my kicking range until I decide I wanna do something. I'm gonna react right after that, okay? So I'm gonna defend, and react, okay? One more time, defend, react. Go to the lower leg. Notice my face was covered, my chin was tucked in. Okay, so if he was gonna go for a straight while I was going for that, I'm out of his range. I stepped in a 45 degree angle, and defend it. Okay, now I want to go over a few things that uh, Steve just did. And I want to go over especially the technique differences between one fighter compared to the next. Stay away this there. Now when Steve throws a back Muay Thai kick, so he kick the leg. Good. Now you notice a fighter like George Sullivan mentioned before, kick the leg so I can just expose. Not to do this with the arm. And the reason why he said it, because most guys really over-exaggerate the way he meant. And, ah, and the body shot is there. What Steve did, do it and stop, is he protects it. Spin the thing. He protects his ribs with his bicep. He doesn't overdo anything, leaving the ribs open. His bicep protects his ribs. One more time, throw the leg tie kick. It's protected. Even if I throw this shot hard, it's protected. Right, where George throws it, spin again, I'm gonna throw it. George throws the kick here, protecting the ribs. Protecting the ribs here. So it's a little modification. You should modify your moves as you're comfortable modifying them. Some people might wanna throw it wide. You might wanna throw it tight. It's really up to you and how you're comfortable doing it. Steve comes up from a traditional Muay Thai background. So does George, but he's a lot more um, open to the wrestling and the mixed martial art aspect. Uh, Vidi is also a very accomplished mixed martial arts fighter, but his Muay Thai is what's really, uh, really sweet about him. So what we're gonna go over now is the teeth kick. Steve mentioned before how your hand should be up for the lead teeth kick, how your hand should be up, blocking the face. There's a reason why your hands are up blocking the face. Traditional Muay Thai, Steve, you can explain traditional Muay Thai, the lead teeth kick. Absolutely, the lead teeth kick as a second to be used to push somebody into my kicking range or to keep somebody at bay. So if I want to keep him in that range, nice and easy, nice and easy, and I can also work off of it, okay? Uh, the problem with that, you know, um, you know, what can happen is eventually he can counter, move to the side, and if my hands are down, boom, I'm getting clipped. So your chin is always tucked in to your shoulder, okay? And your hands are up. So boom, mix, boom. Okay? Notice one more time. My chin is tucked in. All right, listen, you're gonna get hit. It's a fight. Everybody gets hit. You're not gonna not get hit. Okay? To be grammatically incorrect. But you're not getting hit in your chin and you're protecting your face. I'm actually kind of missing his face, so I'm just replacing his shoulder. And if I hit him in his face, it's going to be just hard to pop his head. It's not going to be any of the real sweet spots. The shoulder's protecting his face. What he's not doing, which is a big deal, is pushing, extending his hips, and just dropping his hands. He's keeping nice and tight with his hands. So when he throws the lead, I'm actually just missing. Like a lot of boxers, you see a lot of boxers square up here. 
with the shoulder off, deflecting off the shoulder. Steve's doing the same thing, but doing it with a traditional Muay Thai kick. Fights under my belt, I'm here to show you some submissions. I'm gonna have a good time today, so pay attention. I'm gonna start with flying on bar. We have a partner here, Ali Mustafa, good fighter himself. We gotta go with. So we're starting here. We're gonna be throwing, jab him. We're gonna get a one, two, we're gonna come into the clinch. Boom. A lot of guys get stuck here in the clinch. So what we do now, we're gonna get fun. So we're gonna do it here, we're gonna start straighten up a little bit, and this bottom leg's gonna come right here. Right up, almost into his armpit. Alright? Hand down the head right here. And on the bicep. And we're gonna, we're gonna leap in the air, and this left leg is going on the other side of his head. I'm gonna go in the air. It's gonna look like this. Alright, so as we're clinched up, I'm gonna pop that head up a little bit. I'm gonna keep his left arm on the bicep. This right hand on the head. And this right, the right leg is going up into his armpit when we jump here. Up here, and this left leg is going up into the head. So when we jump, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna push on him too a little bit. So he pushes back into his a little bit, so he's a little more wide open. I'm gonna push, comes back in. I'm gonna hit the ground, but extend. Say we got this guy on the ground now, gets out of our arm bar. What happens? What are you gonna do? So you gotta nice tighten our guard now, guys tight. So what we're gonna do, nice tight guard, but we want, we wanna keep our hips nice and wide. When we do things, nice and wide, open that up. We never run back, we get off, off angles. What we do, as soon as this guy starts posting up on us, the guy's gonna start throwing, but leans back to throw a punch. Boom, there's his punch. What I wanna do though, when he comes up, I wanna shoot my leg up in here, trap it in his arm. So now he's stuck, stuck. So soon, whenever I'm ready, I'm gonna pop this right over, and take that trainer. Guy starts fighting a little bit, I'm gonna hook it inside right here. Lay that down, two hands on the head. Alright, guy starts leading up and throw a punch. Boom. Slide that up right away. Get long. Get as long as you can. Rest it on the hip if you want to. Get a nice grip on his hand here. As soon as you're ready. Stuff that hand a little bit. Boom. That leg goes over. We're clamping. Pop this across. Now we got a triangle. Guy starts fighting. We're going to hook this far leg. And keep this locked down and on the head. All right, guy, guy with the front punch, boom, we get long, hold that hand. As we tuck this hand in, our leg comes around it. We lock it up top. You want to trust that? Right, this foot right here, in this hip, and we're going to pivot. We're going to pivot with this foot. That's going to make this really, lock your hand, you whatever you want there. This leg's coming down on top. Hip up, that arm across. Perfect try. And right now, I just want to go over a few things that, as a coach, I see a lot of people do wrong. I really want to correct that from right now. From the triangle, a lot of people, they'll just try and suck the triangle here with their hips aligned still with his hips. This is not a good triangle because right from here, all he's going to do is posture up and he's out. Okay? You know, I could try and still reach. A lot of people will try and do stupid things like this and try and get for the arm and he's passed. So really important, and Roddy showed it before, this leg that's going to be across his head needs to be across. So once you get it, you got to clamp it on here. Now I'm going to show something that is, uh, you know, I guess for me being in this position a lot, I notice when the triangle is tight, when it's not tight, he's just trying to defend, defend it. He's just trying to defend it. But when it starts getting tight, his last resort is striking until finally it's the tap. So when you hit, someone starts really striking down on you, take that as like almost a compliment. The fight's almost over there. That's his last resort. He's gonna waste his last energy trying to hammer fist his way out. But as you see, it actually was tight. It's only a few shots I took. If you can't take a punch, you're in the wrong sport. So there's only a few punches I'm gonna take and I'm gonna win the fight. So one more time. When I get it, I, I stuff the arm. Roddy, the way he did it was great. It was off a punch, but just for the technique, we'll just stuff here. It's not gonna be here. It's gonna be there, nice and tight. Here. I might take a little. 
but I still won the fight. Guys, another movie we're gonna show you from the Rubber Guard called the Go Go Plata. Probably heard of it, but don't know how to do it. Then you know. Same thing. The guy throws a punch. He was gonna slip that knee in. So he always got the wrist here. The wrist control is crucial. So he got that in there. And instead of tucking this in now, I'm gonna come over the arm. I'm gonna pop here. I'm gonna come over it. What I do now? See this leg? So I'm gonna ride him. It's nice and tight. And you're ready. Boom. We'll go right in front of his, right in front of his neck. I'm going to bring him in here, I'm going to lock him up on top. So, same thing we're going to do here from Rubber Guard. This is the Umo Plata now. I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to throw a punch like you. I'm going to catch this arm here. We're going to lock this in tight like always. Instead of stuffing this arm, I'm going to come over the top of it. Trap this arm in here. We're going to open our hips up so we get plenty wide on him. Like the wide. This thing's going to ride up as soon as you're ready. Take this. Boom, right in front of his neck. And now, this is gonna be right in his, jaw, right in his jaw, and this foot, I'm gonna right on top and lock his head in. Pull on the head, get the tap. FMANATIONTV.COM! Right on fight team. Good day at the office.